Okay. Nope, got it. <laughs> got that's recording. Yeah, and some of you may want to come back and look at some of these materials too that we're going to cover. So um, I'm Zena Edwards. I'm with Washington State University, Clark County, but I also um, have some assignment in Cowlitz County. And I'm um, really um, glad to be able to roll out this program. So we're, we're able to bring this four part Food for Thought series out to uh, the community because of the blood pressure self-management program. So some of you on here are in that program and it's a 16 week program uh, that's been shown to help people with um, working with their providers and just being more aware about monitoring their own blood pressure at home. And um, so it's great to be able to kick that off. And, and if you're interested in that and are not in it or have friends or family members who you think would like to be interested, contact Alyssa because uh, it was been very popular. And so we anticipate that there'll be another round starting soon. So the, the purpose of these, oh, and I should say, um, I've been with WSU for about 15 years, no, 17 years now. And um, I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist, and I also do a diabetes prevention program like Alyssa does, and that's how we kind of met early on when she came into the community, um, and have been adding some other um, programs to help people with preventing and managing chronic disease, because it's really important, and you are the managers of your lives every day. So today we're going to cover how food affects blood pressure. And I know with just doing kind of the, um, the onboarding and the check-ins, I know a lot of people are wanting to have goals of, of lowering medication or getting off medication or lowering blood pressure. And um, food can help, food choices can help do that. Of course, we still want you to work with your um, doctor and don't come off any medications or anything like that unless you're talking to them. But um, there's some kind of, um, interesting things you can do as far as, as what you're eating that can improve um, your blood pressure. And even if you don't completely come off a of medication, you can actually, your medication might work better. Okay, so first of all, question for you, and you're welcome to just, um, just answer back, or you can put it into the chat either way. So what concerns you most about high blood pressure? So we'll just focus on that first question. So what concerns you most about high blood pressure? Feel free to put it in the chat. Oh, that it's silent. Yeah, we don't usually feel the effects of high blood pressure. Yeah. Stroke, heart attack, okay. The long-term effects of high blood pressure. Okay, anything else? All right, it feels gross, okay. All right. Uh, affects productivity, okay, you're getting to the next question I was gonna ask Jeremy of, yeah, how would high blood pressure or even the effects of high blood pressure, how does that impact your life? or how might it potentially impact your life on a, on a daily basis? So Jeremy says affects productivity. I had a lot of great pictures in this presentation that Alyssa, Alyssa um, provided um, from, um, I think they were up, from, up in uh, the Toledo site. But lots of people are saying they really want to control their high blood pressure and want to manage it better because of grandkids or family or just, you know, wanting to be around for that. And certainly that is, um, that's a great motivator. So keep that in mind as we go through this talk. And then what would you like to get out of this food for thought discussion today? So Leo says wanting to understand more about blood pressure. We'll cover a little bit of that. What else? What are other folks hoping to get? More info about the numbers, okay. I'm 
tips on how to manage high blood pressure, some salt alternatives, okay. Understanding about foods that may affect my blood pressure. Okay, great. Well, we're, we're going to cover most of this today, but not all. But the good news is that we have three more of these talks coming up. So what we don't cover today, oh, good, food that may help. Okay, so by the end of today, you'll be able to name some foods that increase blood pressure and then foods that decrease blood pressure, because a lot of times we hear about foods that increase, but um, there are a lot that actually you can do to, to lower your blood pressure. And then we're gonna talk about the DASH eating plan and how you can um, translate that into a My Native plate that's right for you for some food choices. And then also Alyssa's gonna finish up in the last 15 minutes talking about physical activity and you can come up with your own plan for managing blood pressure. Okay, so what have you heard about blood pressure and health? Important to keep it under control, okay. Anything else? Okay, we'll just do a quick review on what blood pressure is. Um, so blood pressure, it's the force, oh, impacts other systems. Yep, high blood pressure can cause a stroke, right? So it's the force of the blood in the main arteries generated by the pumping action of the heart. So you get a top number, which is when the heart is actually contracting, and then bottom number, which is the, the diastolic when the heart is resting. So you still have pressure on your veins, even if your heart is resting. So I've heard it um, explained like a garden hose, like if you have a sprayer in the garden, hose and um, you know you're spraying the hose but you still have a little bit of pressure there and a normal reading is 110 over 70 and sometimes people are surprised to hear that because they've been they've lowered the number a bit they realize that even that 120 over 80 that we can get um, some blood pressure or some blood vessel damage so wow. as we learn more we get updated and then some of you have already mentioned this, risks of having high blood pressure, heart attack, stroke, heart failure, kidney damage, it's one of the leading causes of kidney failure, internal bleeding, and also impaired vision. And then what have you heard about how food affects blood pressure? Sodium? <laughs> what have you heard about sodium, Gretchen? I, I speak faster than I type. That's, yeah, that's fine. You, you can speak up. Anyone can speak up. It's fine. Well, it, it does cause it to go up because you retain fluid mm -hmm. pressure on the system. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's why. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. And then, yeah, Jer Jeremy way. says coffee also makes it go up, right? Because that's one of the keys we say when you're going to take your blood pressure, right? Wait at least 30 minutes before oh, yeah. you, you take yeah, your blood pressure. I out okay. Yeah, so as Gretchen was saying, too much sodium causes your body to hold extra water. So it, it holds that, holds the fluid in, and then it creates a little more pressure on uh, the blood vessels and the veins. And it puts stress on your heart and the blood, blood vessels. And like I said, even at that kind of uh, the 120 over 80, you're starting to see some um, damage to the blood vessels. And then high sodium foods increase blood pressure. And um, most people know that. And the most common thing I hear when people want to reduce sodium, they say, oh, I don't put any salt in my food, which is great. That's a great starting point. And it used to be we could say, um, just take the salt shaker off the table and most, you know, that would solve a lot of, lot of issues. But we now know, and we'll cover this a little bit more in the next couple of sessions, 75% um, or three quarters of the sodium in our diet is already found in the food. So even if you're not adding any 
salt to your food or sodium to your food. Um, it could be that you have pretty high levels just because of the types of foods. So we'll go into label reading and things like that later on. Today, we're just going to kind of talk about general foods. So these are the top six um, high sodium foods. And sometimes people are surprised that breads and rolls are in there, but they are. Some of the other ones, not so surprising. Their so, kind of breads and rolls are showing are the commercial type that have higher sodium than the ones I choose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All your favorite stuff. Yeah. Well, you can change your favorites. So that's the good news. Um, and so vegetables and fruits are really important when managing blood pressure. And the obvious reason is because they can replace the high sodium foods and, and they also prevent weight gain. So we'll talk about that in a little bit too. So just having that swap out of fresher foods instead of processed foods can be helpful. But also fruits and vegetables have lots of potassium. And we know now that um, potassium kind of can Somebody we need to mute here. Maybe. <laughs> um, potassium uh, counteracts the sodium. So um, our bodies have this, this uh, mechanism that if we eat more sodium or eat more potassium, it can help counterbalance that. So kind of get double duty, double impact by lowering your sodium and increasing foods that are really high in potassium. So some great sources of potassium, I mean, basically it's the fruits and vegetables again, but some are higher than others. Uh, potatoes are high, um, apricots, sweet potatoes, tomatoes are really high, mushrooms. Um, and you don't always have to go for the highest ones. Remember just swapping that, those foods out can be helpful. And then uh, that potassium, and then along also along with magnesium and calcium, those um, minerals, it helps balance out the sodium and reduce the blood pressure. Okay. Um, great question. So we're getting the question, would potassium supplements help? So um, I'm going to show you some, some uh, outcomes of uh, a research study done, but we recommend food. So in general, for any nutrients that we're saying to get more of, we recommend food. And the reason is our bodies process that better. You don't have to worry as much about like getting too much of it. And then also too, some of these studies have been done with food patterns. So going, oh, those are high potassium foods, but there are also other things that come with that that help with health for blood pressure, even other things. So, um, you know, fiber, other nutrients, um, you know, the calcium and magnesium also come with a lot of those fruits and vegetables. So it's best to get that from the food. Great question. Um, sometimes people are on like a diuretic and they're told to take a potassium supplement from the doctor or a nurse. And so that's something a little bit different. Um, that's more medical advice. Okay. Um, also foods high in fat, sugar, and calories, which are often tied into the high salt food too, salt foods too. Um, they can cause weight gain over time. And we know that um, gaining weight is also associated with increased blood pressure um, if they're consumed too much. So it's important to know you don't have to completely eliminate these things. You know, just some small steps and small changes can actually make a pretty big difference. Um, and just, you know, be thoughtful about when you're having them and, and on what occasions. Okay, so what have you been told about how weight can affect your blood pressure? And I had muted a few people, so don't forget to unmute if you're trying to talk, but please feel free to unmute and say something. It might be yeah. easier than typing. Yeah, don't that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, thanks, Alyssa. Yeah, more weight, higher blood pressure. Mm -hmm causes your heart to work harder. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Increases the burden on the heart. Yeah. 
Okay, but there's some good news that comes along with that too. So um, losing just five to 7% of your current weight, if you're overweight, can actually lower your blood pressure. And um, so this was just like a small weight change that over three months, and it showed that just an eight pound weight loss over three months, um, people had an incredible difference lowering a blood pressure. So um, they started off kind of high here, and then we had this dramatic, dramatic drop. That's the blue there. Um, where their weight went down and then their blood pressure went down too, enough that it would make a big difference. So it doesn't have to be like ideal body weight or even, you know, healthy BMI. It's just, you know, whatever you can do to get, um, get eight pounds off, eight to 10 probably. Okay, have any of you heard about the DASH diet before? Or DASH eating plan? I, don't, I hate the word. Oh, good. I see an N Bowling. Who is N Bowling? I don't know what the first name is. It's Nicole. Oh, Nicole. Hi, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of it, but I haven't followed it. But I have a significant other that I believe that this is going to force my hand as well to do this plan. Okay. okay. So that's, you know, kind of that yeah. motivation of, Tell me more. <laughs> yeah, great. Well, good. Um, what have you, yeah, what, what have you heard about it so far? I thought it was for patients with heart issues. So mm -hmm. I was just kind of going with the whole blood pressure affecting. Okay. But um, I know, or what I kind of know is I think it's supposed to control the sodium intake and mm -hmm. it probably is more healthy foods versus the non-healthy Mm -hmm. You know, the ones that have the breads, rolls, pizza, sandwiches, things like that. Right. Yeah. More whole food, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. More whole food, not entirely. So let's go over what the dash, and I hate the word diet, like I said, but, you know, it makes it easy to say. Um, so dash stands for dietary approaches to stop hypertension. And um, the DASH, DASH program was, it's been tested lots of times, but it was originally it was 500 people. And they took people that already had some high blood pressure issues. And they had this typical American, standard American diet. This is a controlled diet, a fruit and vegetables diet. So it was the standard diet, but just adding more fruits and vegetables to it. And then this combination or dietary approaches to stop hypertension diet, which was um, a DASH style diet, which was reduced sodium and fat and increased fruit and vegetables. So increasing those, um, those better choices, but also decreasing the, the less good choices. So you'll see here that the typical diet um, just kind of maintains their high blood pressure for both the systolic and diastolic, but the, um, the combination of the DASH diet, we see this dramatic drop um, just by, by uh, reducing sodium and fat and increasing those fruits and vegetables. Yeah, so it, it reduces blood pressure, but it also prevented weight gain. It helped control cholesterol and also reduced the risk of heart disease. So it's, it's basically eating more foods that improve, improve blood pressure, vegetables, fruits, whole grains, heart healthy fats, low fat dairy or other low fat calcium rich foods. So we recognize not everybody uh, consumes dairy products, but that calcium is pretty important. <clears throat> and then also less foods that increase your blood pressure. So sodium and salty foods, red meat, solid or saturated fats, and then also those high calorie foods. And um, so who would benefit from a, this DASH diet? Well, people with high blood pressure, those at higher risk of high blood pressure or heart disease, um, those with diabetes or prediabetes, kidney disease, tobacco use, overweight, people that get little exercise. We know some groups um, are more likely to have heart disease and, and chronic conditions. So African-Americans, Alaska Natives, American Indians, and adults 51 and over. Um, you probably noticed by reading this list, but really 
everyone would benefit from following the DASH diet. And it's really built into our, our dietary guidelines now. So when this study came out and we saw there's so many health benefits, not just with blood pressure, but so many other things, they've really translated that into um, a healthy eating pattern for, for most people. Um, so it, it's, it sounds technical and like it's for somebody on low sodium, like lo low sodium restriction. Um, but uh, really it's, it's for everyone. Okay, so this is what it looks like. So, um, and there's some specific serving amounts and stuff. We're not gonna get into that today. Um, I'd be happy to do that at a different time. It takes a little bit of time, but I think you can get to this dietary approach. Yeah, 68 servings is not, it's 68 ounces of grains. Yeah. So it wouldn't be like six to eight. Food. Yeah, it's a lot of fr fresh fruits and vegetables and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a pretty high volume eating plan too. So that's the other thing is a lot of times we can be consuming the same amount of calories and nutrients in a smaller volume, but it's a, it's a pretty bulky thing. So if you like, <laughs> but don't feel like you have to eat all this, but this is just kind of the general guidelines, grains and preferably whole grains because they have those great nutrients that come with it. Lean protein, legumes or nuts or seeds. So legumes would be dried beans, lentils, things like that. Um, limit fats and sweets, and then have the low fat dairy or other calcium rich foods, and then the, the fresh fruits and vegetables too. Um, so yeah, so it's just some examples, corn, rice, bread, tortillas for the, um, let me get that out of there, for the, um, the grains. And then fruits and vegetables, you want four to five cups per day. Kind of a good rule of thumb is like two cups of fruits and three cups of vegetables a day. And we'll talk a little bit more about how to select those next time too on shopping. And then lean proteins, um, you wanna go for leaner beef, pork, chicken, or fish. Um, an egg is fine, deli meat, um, and then watching the sodium or cooked beans or nuts. And then three so servings. Something. Sorry, Zena, real quick. Oh, go ahead. Game meat and stuff would also fall under that category for healthy Oh, food. yes, uh-huh, yeah. yep, yep. I'm gonna show the native plate, so it kind of translates into that, but thank you for bringing that up. So yeah, that'd be salmon, wild fish, um, any kind of game meat is definitely gonna be lean in there too. Zena, how, about how much visually is an ounce of nuts? An ounce of nuts is about a pumpful or an ounce of nuts is about a quarter of a cup. Quarter of a cup. Okay. And it, it could be like a small handful, like they say for almonds, it's it's like 30 almonds. Like oh, that's a lot. Yeah, it can be. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. And then for um dairy, um, if you're not doing the calcium rich or the fortified um, non-dairy milk, look for that. But there's also lots of, I wanna show you this, lots of um, seven sources of calcium that, oops, I didn't come up right. Oh, sorry about that, folks. I'm gonna just copy this. And they're kind of pictured here in the in the graphic. So there are some high calcium foods. One of them is canned salmon with bones. So that's a really good one. Um, nuts. Did you say with bones? Yep. With bones. Yeah. yeah. So if I puree that, it mushes all those bones up because they're very soft. Is that yeah. Correct? Yeah. That's more for like if I don't know about canning, like home canning fish. But like if you buy canned salmon at the store, typically it would have the bones in it. And it's so soft, you don't even notice, but it's pretty high calcium. Um, tofu, people like to eat tofu, that's calcium rich. And then greens, um, sardines. So there are other, lots of options out there. Okay, and then I think we've talked about salt. I think most people know that, that salt or sodium increases blood pressure. And the, the DASH diet limits sodium to 2,300 milligrams a day. And that's not a low sodium diet. So that's just 
what we recommend everybody eat, that or less. And the typical American diet is about twice that much. So yeah, so here's just kind of an overview of the DASH eating plan. And then um, the My Native Plate, which translates quite well into this. So vegetables, fruit, whole grains, fat for your low fat dairy or choosing those greens um, and foods that are high in calcium, fish, poultry, beans, nuts, seeds, vegetable oils. And then you want to limit fatty meats, full fat dairy, sugar sweetened beverages, sweets, and sodium intake. Um, I'll go ahead and show this little video here. So you'll see on the native plate, it's um, half the plate is vegetables, a quarter is a whole grain or starch, a quarter is um, some lean meats. This is baked deer meat with sage. And then we have um, cooked spinach, baked squash with peppers and herbs, and then a side of berries. So this is kind of a nice way to kind of plan out foods and you don't have to worry about too many different things. Put this video in. I always get this little this is just an ad. We gotta get this. There we go. Oh. Answer those questions and get your whole family on the path to healthier eating. Just remember these three steps. Use a nine inch plate. Divide your plate into four equal sections. Fill one section with fruits, one with vegetables, one with grains and starches, and one with proteins like meat, fish, and poultry. Don't stack food higher than one and a half inches. If you have a tower of food on your plate, you have too much food. A healthy lunch can pay off both mentally and physically. Eating a healthy lunch improves your focus and concentration and fuels your body to keep it active. Is this a healthy lunch? Not really. Here's why. The burger isn't a bad choice as long as it's lean ground beef. One small hamburger patty is a good source of protein. Skip the mayo. Use ketchup and mustard instead. They'll add flavor without the calories. You can add a slice of cheese to your burger to add calcium and vitamins. Make the bun a small whole wheat bun. Whole grains provide important nutrition that you don't find in things like white bread and white rice. And people who eat whole grains as part of a healthy diet have a reduced risk of some chronic diseases. Fill the vegetable portion of your plate with tomatoes and lettuce. Put them on your burger or have a salad on the side. Skip the fries and have an apple instead Fruits are a great alternative to unhealthy foods like french fries and desserts. Trade in a high calorie, high sugar soda for a glass of unsweetened iced tea. That small change will save a bunch of calories. Fill your lunch plate with proper portions of healthy foods using the My Native Plate Plan. It will get you through the afternoon with plenty of brain power and body power. I like brain power and body power. How about you? <laughs> hey, Zina, I've got one more question about oh. the meats. Yeah. Um, usually when I buy hamburger, I buy like the, the 80% or something, uh -huh. but I mix it half and half with ground turkey. Uh -huh. Does that help lower the fat in my uh, hamburger meat or should I look for like the 93% hamburger? Well, it depends on the turkey because um, uh not all turkeys created the same, just like not all ground beef is created the same. So let me write that down and we'll um, look into that for one of the upcoming sessions because we'll talk about shopping and all that. And are you going to be able to make the upcoming talks? Okay, let me write yeah, that down. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I yeah. had a problem getting on today <laughs> with links and okay, grandchildren and all that. I know it always can be. Um, yeah, so we'll do some stuff about how to look at food labels. And so then you'll be equipped to be able to answer those questions on your own. But I'll write Thank that you. down as a specific example to bring. 
Turkey and you mix it 80, 20. Okay. I applaud your efforts to, to do that. That's a lot of work. Okay. All right. Oh yeah. Uh, Oh, so somebody says they've had guests. Okay. Uh, yeah, I say just go with whatever your doctors told you if you have some special medical conditions. So, um, so this is just kind of like if you're out um, in the general population. So, okay, I'm going to share my part of the screen again. So. I love that you guys are all thinking about this. Like, how does it really apply? So yeah, here's the example here. And here's a few more examples of what a native plate might look like. Because people sometimes they're thinking like, oh, what do I do if, um, which this is kind of, let me see if I can increase this. Hey, Zena. Yeah. Did you see the comment in the chat about the ketchup? Um, is ketchup basically just sugar? Well, it's definitely not considered a vegetable. It's a condiment. So, <laughs> and yeah, we'll, um, we'll look at how to read food labels and, we, and how to look at sugar. The nice thing is now sugar, added sugar is on the food label, which it didn't used to be. So you can um, make better decisions about that. So I'll write that one down too. Make sure we cover it. And it kind of depends on, you know, the, it's hard to make any generalizations anymore about any one food because there's a lot of variability from brand to brand. So, for example, I know that there are some ketchups, if we're looking at sodium, but there's a lot of sodium in, in condiments, typically. I'd be more concerned about the sodium than the sugar. Um, but there are some brands that tend to be a little bit lower. One of them is Portland ketchup, which is made just down in Oregon. So... I know when I've worked on some low sodium projects, like in cafeterias and things like that, uh, we've recommended that brand because it's lower in sodium. Not that we endorse any brand, but it's just an example. So, okay, so here's some more ideas for your native plate that would also meet the um, DASH food guidelines. So um, here we have yogurt with strawberries, salsa, scrambled eggs, with zucchini, whole wheat tortilla and coffee. Um, the next one is apple, carrot, celery, lettuce, tomato, onion pickle, a beef patty, a bun, looks like it's a whole wheat bun, and then an unsweetened iced tea. And the, the next one is peaches, salad, beef and vegetable stew, cornbread and water. So if you have a mixed food, you just kind of think about, okay, well, what do I have in there? And uh, always be looking for some opportunities to add those vegetables to things. Um, it makes it a little bit easier. Okay. And here's a few more examples and just kind of, you know, um, some more variation on the my native plate. So here's a actual plate of some native foods here. We got fish, looks like we had smoked fish and some salmon, or maybe that's even game meat. It's hard to tell. Some wild rice and uh, Brussels sprouts and maybe some, some yeah. wild greens here over in the corner or nettles. So there's um, some recipes with nettles. And then, um, yeah, same, kind of the same thing. We keep seeing the same, same circle and plate methods. So water, lean meat and protein, fruits or vegetables, starch and grains. So, okay, so now it's your turn. Senna, no. real quick, yeah. there's a question no. in the chat. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I have a hard time monitoring. No, oh. that's why I'm speaking up. Uh, avocado, is that a good choice or a bad choice? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it depends on what your goals are. Uh, so avocado, like nuts, is a healthy, healthier fat. So, and then avocados also, like nuts, are really high in fiber. So um, if it's not causing issues as far as excess weight gain, yeah, sure. So um, it's higher in the healthier fats. So if you're making a choice between like butter or bacon or avocado, avocado would be a better, better choice. So. What do you think, Alyssa? 
Yeah, I agree. I think we need to just, yeah, I, I like people to just make sure they know that it is a higher fat, uh, mm -hmm. like fruit um, or vegetable. Um, so we need to, to consider it like that. But in terms of the, the quality of the fat, it is one of our healthier, just like mm -hmm. you said. So I'm in full agreement. I think it's a great way to add a little bit of a healthy fat. You might find that if you add that in, it's going to keep you fuller a little longer rather than just doing a straight, you know, starchy food or something like that. So yeah, consider how you can fit it in and meet your goals. Um, just be aware for weight loss that it is a higher calorie option. Yeah. And it's not considered a fruit or vegetable per se, no. because it's so high in, in fat. So it'd be kind of like that, that added flavor, added healthy fats. So great. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. So Kristen says when she first eating the Dashway, a lot of creative ways to use. Yeah. Any way you can use vegetables in place of any of those simple carbohydrates or processed foods is great. Yeah. Nice. OK, we're going to give you like two minutes to come up with your own native plate. <laughs> so we'll just let you work on your own and. Um, just come up with one idea of what your plate might look like. And we can go back to here. And I just wanna say, sometimes you'll see it's half the plate fruits and vegetables, and sometimes it's half the plate vegetables. You know, really either one is great. Um, if you're wanting to, um, you know, watch your carbohydrates a little bit more because of, uh, or manage your diet, the carbohydrates because of diabetes, go with half your plate vegetables, but, you know, I kind of feel like if an apple is replacing uh, JoJo's or something, that's fine. You know, it's kind of like, what can you do? So, um, okay. We'll give you three minutes to work on that. And one way to think about this activity might be think about a meal you had recently. And if you were going to change oh, that's it great. to a mm -hmm. diet plan, like what would you change? Like kind of like we saw in the video. So if you wondering where to start and just want to want to pull out stuff or think about what you could have for dinner tonight. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Thanks, Alyssa. Mm -hmm. Oh, Tammy, I already shared her salad with everything, brown rice, apple and grilled salmon. So Tammy, tell us a little bit more about your salad with everything. What does that mean? Okay, Jeremy says sardines, apple slices, hummus, broccoli, wheat bun. Nice, nice. And yeah, just a little warning about the salad with everything. <laughs> so hopefully that means everything like all kinds of different great vegetables. Because if you're doing a salad with, I've seen a lot of salads that might be with like bacon bits and fried onions and sunflower seeds, which sunflower seeds would be okay. Um, yeah, I'm getting hungry too, Alyssa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Love your examples, Tammy. So cucumber, radishes, I did tomato. Yeah. Yeah. So just because it's a salad, you know, doesn't mean sometimes people put, yeah, cheese, bacon, all kinds of stuff on it that really makes it not a salad anymore. Chicken, mixed greens, blueberries, brown rice. Great. Kippered snacks, hummus. Um, Eight grain slice of bread, cherries, nice. Mrs. Dash garlic spice. Yeah, hopefully you're all using the Dash, Mrs. Dash things that um, Nicole put in your gift bag. So Ramona says salmon, asparagus, sweet potato, water, no sugar, no sugar root beer. Oh, interesting. That sounds really interesting. Okay, canned salmon, strawberries, apples, tough orange green salad, bread, avocado. Nice. Some gr great ideas here. Roast beef with a half potato, carrots and celery, garlic crock pot meal. Nice. Okay. Carrots, apples, lean pork, cottage cheese. Nice. 
Okay. Jicama taco shells, huh? Lettuce, tomato, red onion with extra sharp cheese and grilled chicken and onions and mushrooms, a whole orange. Lots of nice variety going in there. Nice. Yeah, we got some chefs, it sounds like. I know. <laughs> you gotta mm -hmm. share the recipes. <laughs> oils? Yeah, so oils would just be, um, you just want to add a, a, a just a small amount. So those healthy oils are healthy fats. So I kind of, and I'm not saying this is the way you have to do it, but just kind of in general thinking like maybe one tablespoon of added oil or two tablespoons of dressing or um you know a quarter cup of nuts so kind of keeping it within that one to 200 calorie range um well coconut oil olive oil so coconut oil so it depends on your goals again so if you're looking for heart health coconut oil is a saturated or solid fat and olive oil is a um monounsaturated heart healthy fat so coconut oil is not a healthy for your heart oil, but olive oh. oil is. Mm -hmm. yeah. What about, because uh, I use different oils for different things, depends sure. upon what I'm cooking. I yeah. use corn oil for baking. Is that a good one? Well, in general, if an oil, I mean, if it, in general, the oils that are liquid at room temperature are going to be um, less saturated, which means that they're a better choice. Okay. And then also, too, you always have to consider the amount you're using. So yeah. no oil is going to be healthy <laughs> if you're using more of it than your body needs. Okay, thank you. Or that, yeah, yeah, these are great questions. Okay, I love how you're thinking holistically. <laughs> okay, baked chicken, roast broccoli and carrots, brown garlic rice. Yum, sounds good. Okay, well, I challenge you to kind of always be thinking about... Um, you know, a great, just where you can start. So I didn't want to overwhelm you by giving you the whole dash eating plan and writing out menus for weeks. Um, but in general, some kind of quick and easy things, like I said, just looking for ways you can swap out those less processed foods and, and add in, um, you know, try to get at least two fruits, fresh fruits a day or no sugar added fruits, frozen, frozen, no sugar added fruits are great too. And then also your vegetables. So three, three or more vegetables. Um, some people get a little bit worried about breakfast. You don't have to have vegetables with breakfast, but you could if you wanted to have some stir fried greens or something like that. So get creative. So next time we meet in a month, um, the best mm. chocolate to eat is in what you really enjoy in limited amounts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because if you eat, so, if you're like, oh, I'd really like to enjoy some sweet and you don't let yourself have what you really enjoy and instead eat a far more of what you don't enjoy, that's not good either. So you'll notice that they weren't completely eliminated on the DASH eating plan. Yeah, veggie omelet would be good for breakfast too. So yeah. Okay, so I'm going to really love hearing how this goes for you um, next time we, we meet, which will be in about four weeks. I'm going to turn it over to Alyssa for physical activity. Could, could you keep cheering and I'll just tell you when to move forward? Is that sure. okay? Yeah, okay. I, I <laughs> added a few different slides in here. Hopefully that doesn't... I don't, I'll, I'll, I'll try to stay on my toes. This is good. Okay. <laughs> Um, so thank you, Zena. That was great. Um, it's lovely to have like an RD talking about these things because, yeah, um, and hearing a different perspective. So I really appreciate everything you shared and I learned sure. something. I hope you all did too. Um, so eating is just one part of the equation and there's so much more, right, that we're not even going to cover today that affects your blood pressure, um, sleep and stress and all these other things. But we are going to talk about physical activity. And for any of you who have attended my classes before, you'll know how much I talk about physical activity. If you ask doctors, the one thing they would encourage a patient to do on their own, to change in their life, to improve their health, no matter what the issue, is physical activity. That's right number there. one. There you go. This is it. This is your prescription. <laughs> Not only just to lower your blood pressure, but um, to 
to do so much more for your health, right? It, it okay. improves your mental health. It improves, uh, it helps manage blood sugar for people with diabetes, so many different things. It helps control weight and helps weight loss. So physical activity, that's my little soapbox. I'm going to step down. So um, before we get started, I want to know what, um, for those on the call, what is your experience with physical activity? Um, or we could call it exercise, but if exercise is a scary word, um, really it's just moving. Moving we enjoy, movement we like to do. So what is your experience with it? Anyone want to share? I like to walk. Walking. I love to walk. I When my health was better i used to walk at least an hour a day just around the neighborhoods uh judging everybody else's lawn to see if it was cut right i mean you know my husband and i would just it was just fun i i enjoy walking that's awesome walking is good i hope you don't live near me you might have judged my lawn poorly um <laughs> it was fun it gave us a chance to talk to the neighbors and get to know them it, it was a fun activity uh, yeah, so walking is probably the number one, right? It's very accessible for a lot of people. Um, we can increase the intensity just by increasing the speed or the, or like I see in the, the chats on the hill, like going up a hill or adding weights to our hands. Um, we can do it in fun places and then we call it hiking, but it's still just walking, right? <laughs> um, I see people do, uh, they go to Planet Fitness, uh, gym, which is, awesome um video walk uh dance exercises yeah so we might if we have time I'll, I'll show you guys some some options you can just pull up on youtube but there's great if you love to dance dancing is great um gretchen says that as she's got older she's become more sloth like that is not my words those are hers <laughs> um uh and she would do walking or stationary biking mm -hmm. or and then that leads us to biking outside so um, other things that maybe people didn't mention, playing with the kids or the grandkids, right? That's a great way to get movement. Um, they can definitely keep us going when we don't want to. We don't want to be going anymore. Any other thoughts on that? You know, cleaning, cleaning. is a physical activity. Yeah, really. I can get pretty out of breath scrubbing and sweeping and. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're coming up into gardening time, right? I, I know that there's some gardeners on this call. Um, Gretchen says not cleaning. <laughs> I agree, Gretchen. It's supposed to be movement you enjoy, but yeah, <laughs> some people <Or> do. <laughs> maybe you're mowing the lawn so that your lawn's not being judged. So you're doing yard work. <laughs> yep, mowing the lawn. There you go. <laughs> All right. So, so many options. So I encourage you guys. And what this what this shows me is that we all have different things that we enjoy and we don't enjoy. And I encourage you to find something that you enjoy because we want this movement, we want this physical activity to be a lifelong thing, right? And so that's gonna be far more likely if it, whatever you're doing is something you enjoy. Okay. So again, this is your prescription, right? Rx for blood pressure lowering exercise. One daily, but what does that mean? <laughs> we'll talk yeah. about that <laughs> yeah. in a second. <laughs> so um, even if you don't lose weight, so a lot of people get into physical activity or exercise, I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to lose weight. But even if you don't, this is just a fancy graph showing that you can lower your blood pressure um, even without weight loss. And then I don't know if you want to say anything about yeah, that. Yeah, that's basically yeah. it. That's basically what it showed. These people didn't lose weight, but, and then also to the variety. So conventional resistance training, circuit resistant training, running had the best lowering, but, and jogging, but walking was good too, cycling. So I just like this because it showed the variety and then also too, that people didn't have to lose weight just to have a benefit. Mm -hmm. So how much exercise should we get? Um, and I like to point out that there's two prim primary types of physical activity when we talk about this. We talk about this exercise or this moderate intensity physical activity. And we wanna do that 150 minutes um, per, of moderate intensity per week. So when I say moderate intensity, does anyone know what that means? I know a few people on here should because I know I've probably taught you this at some point. <laughs> You can uh, walk, but still talk. Yes, so you can talk, but you can't do what? What's the thing you shouldn't be able to do if you're, if 
Ooh, I don't know that one. Sing. Sing. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, and that doesn't mean on key all the time. That means you can't catch your breath enough, right? So that's a really good basic way to tell if you're in that moderate intensity. If you can sing, you're still a little lighter. If you can't even talk, you're in a kind of vigorous, which is okay too, but that's a little more vigorous. So 150 minutes, I like to think about that as 30 minutes a day, five days a week, but you can break it down however you wish. We also want to do strength training. Um, and this is working most of your muscle groups. Two or, two or more times a week. And this is really important for our muscle health, our bone health, our mobility and all that stuff. And this is not to say that all that light activity, maybe when you're not um, bringing that heart rate up as much as you would for moderate intensity, isn't super important. The more we move around, the more calories we burn, the better we feel. So still getting in that light activity throughout the day, but then also trying to get that heart rate up for that 30 minutes a day, five days a week. Okay, there you go, example. 25 minutes every day. I skipped ahead. That's okay. <laughs> and, um, oh, let's, oh, sorry. And I just want to say, oh, well, let's do this. Yeah, okay. let's go. No, just, okay. Oh, I, <laughs> um, so, so I posing this question to you guys, if you were to get that 150 minutes a week, um, how do you think you would do it? Using my yeah. brakes to walk around outside yeah. for the yeah. 15 minutes. Right. We get those 15 minute breaks. Um, I know that that Dina's a, a fellow coworker here. So we get 15 minute breaks. Maybe where you work, you get a 10 or 15 minute break. Um, and that brings up a really good point is that we don't have to do it in 30 minute increments, right? We can do it, we can break it up into 10 or 15. So if you do 15 twice a day while you're at work, the so five days a week. Oh my goodness, you just got 150 minutes. <laughs> what else? Any other ideas? Um, I see little exercise snacks. I love Jeannie, that. Wanna, I love that term. And you introduced <laughs> me to it, Jeannie. Do you want to talk about that at all? Or not really? <laughs> Putting on the spot. It's just, it's overwhelming. And think of exercise just like how you like eat little snacks to keep you going. It, little short exercise snacks throughout the day, those 10 minute, 15 minute things add up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks Jeannie, that's awesome. Um, walking and exercise videos, yep, most days of the week, set aside time. So yeah, for some people you might be like, no, those little snacks, that's not gonna work for me, I'm not gonna remember, maybe you wanna set aside 30 minutes, 45 minutes a day, and that's your exercise time, that totally works too. And just um, get it into your routine, um, set a time, just like it's an appointment. If you had an appointment with your doctor, you show up. If you have an appointment with your uh, stationary bike, you show up to it, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, fit board, okay, at a stand-up work desk. Yeah, so you could, I mean, stand-up desks are awesome. And, and if you can incorporate it into work time, that's awesome too. Great, those are all awesome ideas. Um, remember, you don't have to go, if you're sitting there and being like, oh my God, 150 minutes <laughs> and I'm at, 10. <laughs> How do I get there? Don't go from 10 to 150. Like think about small bites, small things you could do. So maybe it's starting with a 10 minute walk three days a week. And that's already more than you're doing. And then um, you can increase taking grandkids to the bus stop. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Walking Good. dogs. No Good. one mentioned their dog yet. <laughs> yeah. um, Tam Tammy's, yeah. Tammy says she's uh on her personal cell, so she's been walking while she's listening. Mm -hmm. so. Oh, and somebody was gonna say something, sorry. Park far away. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. All those little mm -hmm. things, right? Take the stairs, park far away, yep. All right, let's see what, I don't know. Let's see what's next. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, weight, right? So when we talk about um, weight loss, we know that physical activity is an important part of weight loss, and we know that weight loss helps blood pressure. So that's an additional way that it can be helpful. And we know that exercising regularly can help reduce our risk of certain things like heart attack, stroke, diabetes, cancer, weight gain. Like I said, it's like it's like miracle prescription that we can have for so many different things. So yeah. so important. And all the I, mental health benefits and sleep benefits aren't even on there. Yeah. <laughs> and I just like the DASH diet, and I like to bring this up in my uh, diabetes prevention classes when we talk about 30 minutes or that 150 minutes, 
that's the recommendation for everyone in the US to get that minimum, not just with, for people trying to manage chronic conditions or blood pressure or prediabetes. If everyone got that, the whole population health would dramatically increase. So um, something everyone should, should do. So yeah, we are kind of out of time. So I, I'm glad we talked. I was gonna share some videos, but maybe we'll send some in some um, email follow-ups we do with you all. Uh, but the final takeaways is really you guys considering, um, we talked a lot about different dietary changes, some exercise changes. What could you do this week, right now? What small changes? Remember, we want to make things realistic. We want to make things attainable. What could you do to help reduce your blood pressure? And if people want to share in the last two minutes, we can do that. Anything that, that you're going to change moving forward? No, no. My changes will be more uh, based around the exercise. So I think I've got a pretty good handle on the food right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's more the exercise stuff for me. Yeah. Anything specific you're considering? Well, right now I have, you know, like a little circuit in my house, you know, through the living room, kitchen, dining room, and it takes about one minute to walk mm -hmm, it or two. Mm -hmm. So I've been walking Oh, a commercial break, you know, on Hallmark, that's about five minutes. Oh, yeah. You know, once a day, um, I'm going to increase that to two times a day. And uh, I think I'm going to check out those resistance bands that Alyssa sent home and see what that involves using those. Yeah, great. So many good ideas in the chat, too. Yeah. I see. Yeah. <laughs> Changing lunches, maybe away from that high sodium bread. Um, move more. 10 minute walk after dinner. Yes, great time to walk is right after dinner. Um, try different veggies and fruits. Yeah, maybe you'll find a new favorite. There's so many in here. I can't read them all because we're at one. So I want to respect <laughs> everyone's time, but thank you yes. so much for sharing. Um, we do have upcoming ones. Um, so make sure you're on the event right and registering for each of these so you can learn next time about reducing yes. sodium yep. intake. Yeah, and invite okay. others. Anyone can come to these. So, um, yeah, the more the merrier. More great ideas we get. So, yeah. thanks, thanks everyone. It's great seeing y'all, and um, yeah, already doing so many great things and great ideas for moving forward. So, thank you all so much. Thank okay, you. Thank you.